I want to give a big thumbs up to everyone that liked my page and commented positive stuff. How you all doing? I'm here with another podcast. Internet right now. Check your modem or router connection and try again. What the fuck was that? Anyway, my speaker's talking to me. So anyway, I want to talk about a few things. I read in the Daily Telegraph today that they're trying to make law that if you beg a girl for sex or you mislead a girl and you let her think that you're going to be her man and you don't, after you have sex, you stop talking to her. These are considered rape. This is very, 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 very concerning. This country is becoming, I don't even know what to say to this law. So, when sometimes, excuse me, sometimes I meet a girl and at the present moment, I'm genuinely into her, genuinely want to be her man. I tell her I want to be her man. We have sex. The next day, day or two goes past, I start feeling like, oh, you know what? I don't think she's the one for me. And then I just call it quits. So I'm going to get a jar for that. There's been times where I've said to girls, Come on, man, please. You know, let me just slip it in. Come on. And I've been kissing on the cheek and on the neck and whispered in it. Yeah, come on, please, babe. Come on. Come on, now you want this. I'm going to go to jail for that. Is it forgetting? She could always say no. If you're good at persuading someone to sleep with you, is that considered rape? I consider rape this. When you tell a girl, come on, babe, come on, babe. If she says no, then you just grab her and you force yourself on her and then you, that's rape. I don't consider rape when you're just negotiating sex. It doesn't always go to plan and they agree and you just walk away. Sweet, no worries. It's not gonna happen tonight, but you gotta at least attempt it. Get a jail now for that. It looks like I am absolutely screwed. So that's that. I just wanna get that out of the way. And now I wanna talk about a few other things. Ooh, this sesame bar. That noise. Anyway, so listen. Can you see that? Like a rapper. Anyway, what is that, man? What's this bottle? Okay, so. And if you've all noticed, I've lost a bit of weight. I've lost four kilos. I started training after two years. I've been training for three weeks. Back into it. Anyway, let's get... Let's get into this. Okay, she's been asking me questions about... Heaps of things. Let me just read it one sec. Hang on a sec. Okay. Well, he's keep asking me about other nomads taking over Australia because they've been on a recruitment drive. I don't know. I don't speak to him about that stuff. I don't speak to nomads, to you the truth. I speak to my cousins who's a nomad, but we don't talk about club stuff. I ask him how his kids are and all that. I talk to my brother about what he's been doing in jail and all that. I don't talk about club stuff. I'm not a nomad, so please everyone stop asking me nomad questions. So that's that. People have been asking me also, what's the most amount of money I've made on social media? In one day, I think I made four grand. That was like birthday messages and all that. In a matter of a week, of, of three or four days, I've made, I don't know, 12 grand. It just depends, some weeks are good, some weeks are bad. Sometimes I make good money on social media, sometimes I make nothing. It just depends. But. I don't make much on YouTube. It gives me two, three grand a month. It's nothing. It doesn't make, it doesn't give me a lot of money to the truth. No, so to answer your question, it's not the best. I do this because I actually enjoy sitting here telling you guys stories and he's come up to me in the public and he's all hug me and take photos of me and make me feel important. <laughs> so that's what I like. But he's been asking me heaps of questions. Hey, he's been bombarding me with messages, asking about this guy, about that guy. I don't know who I'm going to talk about in my next podcast. 
this podcast, you know, I was going to just talk about the this new law, but seeing that I've started, let me see it different. How do you stop from just crunching someone when you're angry? So go on. He's keep asking me about this Vince Foccarelli. I don't know this guy from Bar of Soap. I've never spoken to him. Don't know much about him. All I know is he's living in Malaysia and he started up a bikey gang in Malaysia. People are asking, what's your opinion? i tell you my opinion on this bloke. He's reverted to Islam. He's doing the best he can do. He's doing the best he can do with a bad situation. He's living in another country. He's opened up this motorcycle club for whatever reasons. Obviously, it's benefiting him. No one knows what he's going through. So, I don't really know much about him. So, all I know is he's opened up a Muslim gang in Malaysia, and that's all I know. I guess he's just doing what he can do to survive over there. So. I can't comment on something that I'm not in his shoes. I don't know. A lot of people are interested about it. The guy's got a lot of a lot of fans here. I don't know what you call him, but he's people asking about him. So I'm gonna address that and that's what I'm gonna address it with. And he's always all asking me about big cash. What do you want me to tell you about big cash? I don't I don't know what to say about that either. Like I don't want to comment on it. I haven't seen no paperwork. He occasionally calls me here and there. We have a little chat. You know what I mean? He rings me up. What are you doing? I'm like, not much. I keep it simple. And I just, yeah, nothing against him, but I just got no time for all this gangster talk and this guy's done that, that guy's done this. It's just, this life doesn't interest me no more. I couldn't give a fuck what anyone's doing. I'm worried about what I'm doing. I see they're all doing podcasts and they're all doing Instagram. I don't know. Everyone keeps asking about Spanian. Spanian's doing pretty good. I don't really know him either. I see him in the street. We say hello to each other and it's left at that. I don't know, I don't know the guy to comment on him, but good luck to what he's doing. I've got this opinion and this theory about all these guys that do podcasts and doing Instagram, good luck to him. If they, if this Spaniard can make money and he's in a positive, I know he's don't see it positive because sometimes he talks about crime or whatever, but looking at it from my perspective, he's living positive. He's not selling drugs. He's not doing breaking in He's focusing on his own life. So good luck to him. You know, so that's that. Who else he's asking me about? He's keep asking me about Melbourne gangsters and he's asking me about all these fucking blokes that I don't know much about, eh? I'm telling you now, I'm too busy worrying about my own fucking life to worry about anyone else's. I'm not going to sit and talk shit about cunts. Fucking, there's no need. I don't know none of these people. You know, you, 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 I'll tell you what I've realised about Instagram and social media in general. You people sit there and you do your comments and your inboxes and you ask this question, you ask that question. He's trying to cause trouble. Why the fuck would I go and comment about this guy, that guy? It's not, they're not fucking with me. Why would I fuck with them? Do you know what I mean? You, you, you wouldn't even talk about someone that's talking shit about you. You just fucking deal with it when you see them. But let alone that, everyone he's asked me about, got no beef with, never had a drama with, we don't have issues with each other. But you all keep trying in your comments to cause trouble. I just think fucking HTO, mate, live your lives. 
You know what I'm saying? Fucking yeah. And a lot of people asking me for boxing matches and would I fight this guy? Listen to me now. I'll tell you all this. You give me the right amount of money, I'll fight anyone. I don't give a fuck who it is. Don't even suggest a name. Just put the money up and I'll fight anyone. I will go toe to toe. If he's giving me 250 grand and upfront payment, I'll fight anyone. I'll fight two, three people on the one night card. I don't even give a fuck if they're professional fighters, if they're not, if they're gangsters, if they're not gangsters. Anyone wants to lace up gloves for money, I'll do it. Straight out. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm interested in, making money. I'm not interested in these politics. I'm not interested in dramas. I'm interested in doing podcasts, doing Instagram, working in my shops, jumping in the ring for money. That's my type of lifestyle. I'm not here to fucking be gangster. Believe me, if I wanted to be fucking gangster, I wouldn't be sitting on this camera. I'd be fucking on the street running a fucking muck. Easiest thing in the world is to fucking put a belly on and fucking cut sick. That doesn't interest me. You want my fucking advice to all these gangsters out there? Mate, what are you, what, what are you doing? What he's fighting for? What is, what is all this, mate? The day is going to come when God is going to call for you people. You know what I mean? God is going to come and call for you people. And when he calls for you people, do you think any of this reputation or you're a mad cunt in this and that is going to help you? Do you know what I mean? Like, I believe we're all going to die. The real time I changed my life is when I realized I'm gonna fucking die one day in front of God. Look, I sit in the, yeah, I'm solid ass, yeah, I can do this. You can do nothing when it comes to God. Go and turn the hot water on in the shower and put up boiling hot water for a couple of minutes and then jump in there. You couldn't do it and you wouldn't do it. That's nothing compared to what's gonna to happen to you in the next life for all these things is a dawn. You know what I mean? I didn't turn my turn a path because I was scared of any car. Fucking not at all. I live in Sydney. If anything, I've got a bigger target on my back now that I'm a, I'm a fucking freelancer, so to speak, on my own. So these people that say, oh, you left the bikies because you're scared. I don't even, maybe tell you, so it's hard to leave a crew when you're someone like me. Everyone knows I'm a one-man show these days. You know what I mean? I'm a very easy fucking target to take me out. Do you know what I mean? I walk around, not scared of no cunt. I'll do what I've got to do. If that, if that time comes and I'm confronted with something, then I'll deal with it. Do you know what I mean? I, I turn my life because I, I just think I, I'm scared to face God as a gangster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone's scared of something in life, and my biggest fear is God. I'm being honest with you guys. So if you're a young cunt out there watching this, thinking, oh, yeah, I want to be like this cunt or like that, fucking snap out of it, mate. You could die tomorrow. You're gonna to front God and you're gonna be fucked. Fight for important things in this world. Don't fight for fucking gangster stuff. I'm gonna wrap this podcast up. And the reason I don't have much to talk about tonight because I only jumped on to talk about this. I just read about the Daily Telegraph thing and I just wanted to discuss it. And then I thought I'm on here now, I might as well do a little video and just rave on about whatever I'm raving on about. <laughs> If you want to start giving me good good questions, by all means, you know, Mick's coming on this week. We're going to do another podcast, going to ask the questions or whatever. I'd rather just do podcasts talking about events in Sydney that are happening or events around the world or fucking bring people in, interview them. I think I'll do better interviewing someone than someone interviewing me. But we'll, we'll see. I love you all. I wish you all a safe fucking weekend and I hope you all fucking kissed your mothers for Mother's Day and yeah, stop being gangsters and just focus on your lives peace out